scene is a small preview of a small build tutorial I'm doing on um, sort of like that slow-mo clock time speed that they used to do in the show effect I really like but first I thought I would just show a brief overview to camera tracking in Fusion unfortunately this is something that's only available in the studio version so if you've got the free version of Resolve then you're gonna have to perhaps use something like Blender's camera tracker but um, I thought I would just give you a basic intro on how to use it in Fusion let's get started so the first thing we need to do is add a camera tracker node and view that and then hit preview auto track locations and then this will show us where Fusion thinks we've got some good tracking points now straight away I can tell this isn't going to work because it's taken into account in the mirror and reflective surfaces are really bad to track because they don't um, represent the scene properly and also moving objects so there's me I'm moving so what we can do is we can start by rotating out the things that we don't want. So I'm going to grab the uh, polygon tool. I'm going to start with the mirror. I'm going to draw a simple shape around this, close it off. And then I'm just going to animate it um, along the shot by moving it around. So it, for the entire shot, it's under this mask and the camera tracker won't be tracking. So what I do is I go to the furthest point and then I go between keyframes, I realign the shape. And this way you have, there's less work to do because the um, Fusion should interpolate the keyframes quite well. See how it's tracking there quite well. Okay, in the middle of these two keyframes, I need to just realign it, so I'm gonna do that. But it's way less work. You could actually use the planar tracker to track something like this if you wanted to, but this this shot is really short and it's really not that much work, to be honest. Okay, I'm going to call that done. So I'm going to rename this mirror. And then I need to track myself as well because I don't want to be the camera tracker to be picking up any parts of me. So I'm going to again draw a roto spine, not connected to anything because we don't want it to hide any of our view right now. Just draw a really rough mask. And then I like to just hit shift S to smooth out the spline. Okay, and it's the same principle. We're going to hit track forward. In fact, I'm going to, there's a few seconds where I'm not on screen, so I'm just going to move the track off completely. And then have it popping around here. So now that's finished, I'm going to rename this to Sam. I'm going to pipe mirror through. Let's have a look at what we've got. So we need to invert this because everything in white will be tracked and everything in black won't. So we need to click invert. And then under me, I'm gonna set the paint mode to subtract and then pipe this into our camera tracker. Now, if we have a look, we should see that it's actually tracking everything but the mirror and me. So that looks to be correct. Doesn't always work perfectly first time. So we may have to just delete some track points that it picks up, um, but for the most part, that should be okay. So we're gonna click on camera tracker, enable bi-directional tracking, which will track forwards once and then backwards once to make sure it's super sure. And we can also just change the detection threshold. So if we lower this down and also the minimum feature separation, just so we've got more trackers to work with. So although we may have some bad trackers in here, it's just gonna give the, uh, it's gonna give Fusion more to work with. I'm gonna set this to point two, I think. Uh, point naught two, sorry. It's just we're giving Fusion more information to work with. Set this to one point nine. Okay, so we're saying be less picky when choosing out trackers, and then we can go through and sort them ourselves. So I'm going to click auto track now and let that track through. And as you can see, that was pretty quick. Uh, now I'm going to go to options, darken image, and this will just allow us to see trackers a bit clearer that are incorrect. So for example, ones that are stuck to me where I haven't quite rotoed properly, we need to delete those because we know that they're just going to confuse things because they're moving. Just any ones that don't seem to be following 
if you look at the motion trails, you can see which ones are following the scene well and which ones aren't. They should all, and then for this shot, they should all be pretty linear, parallel lines moving across. Okay, that one obviously is wrong. Oh, we've got some bad ones here as well. So let's try that through. I don't like these light ones. So I'm gonna get rid of these. Oh, this one's moving around, and this one here too. As you can see, it's just a process of going through and just looking which ones are bad. I'll delete these as well. I really don't like these light ones. They're throwing me off a bit here. Okay, so let's try a solve. Let's go click on solve and then hit solve here and this will reconstruct our camera in 3D space. And when that's solved, we'll have a solve error up here of uh, 1.2 pixels. So that's how much margin for error there is. Ideally, we want it to be under one and in perfect cases, we want it to be under 0.5. So we still have some work we need to do to this, just like I knew there would be because we've just kept all of the trackers that Fusion's given us. What I'll do now actually is just export the scene, clicking export and then export again. And let's throw that over here because I was working on some tests earlier. And now you can see we have a scene, but it's all over the place uh, because ideally you should be able to see the geometry of the shot. You can kind of see the, the computer desk here, the TV here, the sideboard, but it's not quite right. So I'm gonna go back to the camera tracker and actually I'm gonna split my view and I'm gonna put the uh, scene in my second screen. And then I'm gonna go back to the camera tracker and we can start refining this. And I'm going to say anything, uh, I'm going to click on the solve tab and using the track filtering, I'm going to say anything with a solve error of three. I'm going to select these tracks um, and I'm going to delete them. Now, it may be that we now don't have enough tracks, so I'm going to have to just see what it does. Nope, we've got enough tracks, so let's solve again and let's see what happens to our solve error. And now we have a solve error of 1.6, but actually it's a worse solution because you can see that the camera is kind of just going crazy over here. So we still need to refine this. I'm going to delete some of these points and let's just go through and see, look at the worst points that it has here. Let's darken our image. Okay, so it really gets thrown off here for some reason. Between frame 40 and 41. So let's see what's going on. Let's just... Okay, the only difference is, it seems like... This seems to pop in. So I'm going to delete this point here. And let's another look and I'm gonna go minimum track length let's let's bump this up so minimum track length it needs to be is 15 frames and on the so I'm gonna say each track has to be 15 frames if it's less than 15 frames then I'm gonna say set the solve weight to 50% so that will say okay short-lived trackers don't take these into consideration as much and I'm gonna hit solve again it's just a continuous process of uh, tweaking and solving and seeing the solution that the computer can give you. Okay, point six, that's getting a lot better now. And you can see that the actual geometry of the scene is starting to make a bit more sense. So here we've got the, the sideboard, we've got the computer desk here, and then we've got the television roughly there. So it's starting to take shape. Let's see if we can refine this further. Um, what we'll do now, I think, is let's align our scene. So I'm going to grab these points here. And under export, I'm going to set the scene to unaligned because we want to set the alignment ourselves. And I'm going to say set the orientation. Um, I want these points here to be on the x-axis. So I'm going to go set from selection. And then we want the origin of our scene, let's say, to be these points here. So I'm going to say the origin set from selection 
And then we can also adjust our scale. So if we bump, um, if we grab a couple of points, let's say these two, and I'm going to say set from selection, I'm going to say it's roughly one meter between these or one unit. And then I'm going to hit solve again and it should reorient our scene for us. Okay, there we go. So now our scene is aligned much better there. So let's see what else we can do to improve this. Um, actually, I'll tell you what, let's put some geometry in because let, let's, let's see how well it solved the scene first. So let's click on our merge and I'm going to add a cube. And I'm also going to click on our point cloud that it's created for us. And I'm going to set the mode to point because I just find it easier to see what's going on. Uh, but you can really start to see um, the the geometry there computer desk sideboard these these are kind of off in the distance through the doorway you've got the tv here so i'm quite pleased with this so far let's just grab one of these points i'm going to click on it right click point cloud 3d and copy the position click on our cube transform and then paste the settings in and that will essentially put the cube in the right place in our scene so i'm now going to load the camera track of you in so we can see our cube and play that through and let's have a look. That's looking pretty good. That's that's staying pretty solid to its original location. There's pretty much no wobble there going on. So I'm quite happy with that. Let's see if we can refine this even further. I'm gonna hit one on to view the camera tracker again and now we're pretty sure that Fusion knows what's going on as far as um, the scene's concerned. It's got the scene correct. We can probably trust these this color system a bit more. So I'm going to go and delete some of these tracks, especially these ones where we've got a lot of tracks already. I'm just going to go and manually delete the, the worst orange tracks here. We can probably delete these as well. Again, we don't want to delete too many because we don't want to lose the solve. Sometimes Fusion will tell you that you've got a good solve, even with a few tracks, but actually, of course, you haven't got a good solve because it doesn't have enough information. So it's a little bit confusing if you've not done camera tracking before. Oh, there's a red one there. Let's delete that. Okay, I'm going to solve again. And it should automatically update your exported scene, so we should see all that snap into place. Okay, nice. That's even better there. So we can actually clean this up a little bit further. As you can see, there's a few tracks here that are way out in the distance. And what we can do is if we click on the camera tracker, make sure it's in focus, we can actually just select around our points, the ones that are way out in the distance there that we don't want to keep. So say these ones and these ones as well. And then uh, we've got 11 tracks there selected and I can just click on delete like that and it won't delete the point cloud. It will just delete the trackers attached. So we need to resolve to see that change. So I'm going to click solve again and let that go through. Okay, so we've got a 0.66 solve error now. So it's gone up slightly, but we can be more confident that our scene is represented properly. So I'm going to click on our cube. And let's play that through. Yeah, that track looks really good. And just looking again, you can see really clearly here in our scene, we've got the, the sideboard, the table and the, the TV screen. So I'm going to call this done. Um, I'm also just going to put a another cube in here just so we can make sure that the track looks good over here as well so i'm going to grab a point here i'm going to copy that point location and i'm going to paste it onto my cube so now we see our, our cube is on the wall and now let's play it through and that is pretty much bang on perfect now um, I may have said already, but 
ideally in a shot that you want to track, we want to track something with trackers in the foreground and there are no foreground trackers here. So parallax can be a slight issue. Um, you can kind of cheat by moving things out further in the scene and it won't be so much of a problem. But um, so you won't see that sort of perspective change so much. But all in all, I'm really happy with this solution. The last thing we'll do just to show that this is a really decent solve and track, we will put some text in the scene. So I'm going to grab a text 3D node and plug that into our merge. Let's just say tracked. And then we are going to position this in the scene, lining up with our point cloud. Shrink it down a bit and let's have a look through our camera, see what we've got there. And as you can see, that's looking pretty good. And we'll put one on the back wall as well. we'll copy that and paste it. And on a merge, we'll grab our second bit of text and we'll just align that with the TV over here. Like that. And that's the basics of it. So I've actually tracked this shot because I'm going to be using it in a visual effects video tutorial that will be coming out soon. But this just gives you the basics on how to use the camera tracker. And um, hopefully you've learned a few things on how to problem solve as well. And that's all there is to it. As always, thanks very much for watching. Um, keep an eye out and that small build tutorial will be up soon with um, a couple of added effects in there as well. If you like this, as always, please like and subscribe to see more. I'll see you next time. Thanks.